In this video, we're gonna walk you through this custom pixel wall setup here at Generations Church. This pixel wall is approximately 50 feet wide by 17 and a half feet tall, and it contains 11,540 pixels. Phil Nelson, the production director here at Generations Church, is going to walk you through the entire system. We'll cover the hardware involved as well as the software setup and how we are driving content from Resolum and ProPresenter to this pixel wall. So I went to Philo in 2023 uh, and that was the first time I've been in Willow's building and saw their pixel grid that's their backdrop. Really, really liked it, liked what it could, could accomplish and how it didn't distract a ton, but I thought it added a ton to the service. So at the time I was working at a different church, left that role a couple months later, came to this church where I've been at for just over a year and it was time for my first set design and uh, started doing a ton of research, never done any pixel mapping, looked into it a bunch. Willow has a good write up on their production page. Between that and YouTube and Resolum documentation and some Facebook groups was able to figure out how to do this. It took me about three months to build myself and some of our residents here. Super happy with it. It's ended up being a really low cost, like high bang for your buck solution. As it sits now, it's about 50 feet wide. 17 and a half feet tall and there's 11,540 individually controlled leds on it so it that entire system including the wall resolume everything we're able to keep under 15 grand so bang for your buck the size the impact and so on has been really really good the wall itself the leds and then the grid that it goes into is all from a company called Holiday Coro, which is the same company that Willow used. I used, chose for different lights uh, than they did. Uh, their wall is about, like if we wanna think about it in terms of like an LED wall, the pixel pitch of their wall is a foot between each LED. This is three inches. So that company has a product called Pixel Node Net, which gives you perfect three inch spacing. And it's four foot by eight foot sheets. It's essentially landscaping plastic. Yeah, let's take a closer look. Yeah, just plastic. And the LEDs punch through. If I can get it out, they're really in there. So you can see they're there. And then you literally just punch it through. Yeah. Now what we have done is you can overlap them together so you can see there's two layers there. And what I've done is overlapped them by two and just punch the light through both. And then at that point you essentially have a bunch of Lego bricks that you can connect stuff together. So the lights came in strings of 100. So as I said this was 11,540 LEDs came in strings of 100 and me and a group of our residents placed each of these by hand. So it took us about three months. And then each cable, you can see there's a cable hanging off, has a label that corresponds to which ArtNet node it goes to and the string of lights. And then the only way I was able to keep this all organized is a massive spreadsheet that tells me cable name, its subnet and Lumiverse and all that in Resolume as well as its DMX address and universe number for all the pixel mapping stuff. So the plastic grid, how big are the sections? Four foot by eight foot. Yeah, so there's this wall, including the wings, is 29 four foot by eight foot sections connected together. Yeah, and it's, some of them are chopped up or cut in very specific ways. Just use a razor blade, it's just, like landscaping plastic, that's all it is. Got it, so you got both the plastic grid and the LED lights from that Holiday Coro. Yep, as well as the, what are essentially ArtNet nodes that take, can do ArtNet or streaming ACN, and then it outputs what's called SPI, which is its pixel mapping output, and this entire thing runs in 2811 uh, pixel protocol. These cables are coming down, so there's 116 cables hanging off this thing. So that's a lot going on. And as you can see down here, there's a lot of wires coming down uh, underneath the wall. It is, there's a lot going on. Try oh, to keep yeah. it as organized as we could, yep. but there is a lot. But that gray box, okay. this is, so this is Alpha 1. There's its IP address, so I know this is Controller 1. Okay. And it has all the lines coming in, its little CPU controller. Got it. And it's just acting as an ArtNet node and then outputting okay. this way. So, so like the data inputs here, 
Yeah, can you yes. hold it up? Th- those are those are Artnet in in essentially, yeah. Yep. And then all the black wire coming out. What type is this? Just like what type of wire is this? It's a three wire connector. I can okay. show you. So this one I know is output 33 on uh, the node one, and it's cable 223. Okay. So I can just unscrew, and you can see it's just a proprietary. That's from them as well. Got three it. prong. Okay. And then I just and this is all pretty durable there. because this oh, company, yeah. Yeah. you're saying how they make obviously holiday uh, decorations that are intended to be outside. and Yeah, so technically this this entire system is like waterproof, weatherproof, the lights are, the, the webbing is, the boxes if you mount them vertically are waterproof, uh, and the one, cables, all that. And in one year you said you haven't had one of the little lights go out. No, I haven't had a single light go out. Uh, which has been really That's nice. Impressive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. So how many of those boxes are there? So there's four. Okay. And then I also have, as it sits now, I have two what are called long range extenders. So once you leave the Artnet node, I think it's a range of like 20 ish feet. So they designed long range extenders that, like, if you had it set up in your yard and then across the yard you had another ornament, then you wouldn't need to buy a whole new CPU. So I'm using two, which they're just ancillary nodes that come off of it over Cat5. So six total boxes that each have individual power supplies and all that. Talk to us more about the install process and timeline. You said it's, sure. you guys kind of phase this out. It sounds like over yeah. three months. Like, is it possible? Like, if someone wanted to get it done in one week, like, how big of a crew would they need? Oh what man, would it yeah, take? that would be that would be tough. It was a lot of planning, a lot of work. Uh, about a three month timeline for us. I would definitely caution you if you want to get this done in a week. It is super cheap, but it does take a lot of work. That's the big trade-off there. So myself and I had one to maybe three residents helping me at a time, and it was just hours sitting on the stage, putting it together, punching in each individual LED. Did you put part of it up first and you had it running, or did you just wait until it was all assembled? So the wall, so ignoring the little wings that jut out, those were added later. The initial wall was built in horizontal thirds. So obviously it'd be very hard to be up in the air, punching them in individually, trying to line everything up. So across the stage, we just made them in horizontal thirds. So those four foot by eight foot sheets, the top third is 10 connected together vertically. Same with the middle section, 10 connected together vertically. The bottom section is five connected together horizontally. Mm -hmm. And what we did is, like on the top section, I intentionally left four lights hanging off the bottom in like a U, because I knew I wanted to connect the top and the middle together. So I left four lights hanging, and then on the bottom section, I left four lights or two lights per row holes open. So what we did is when we finished all three sections, we laid them all out in a big atrium off to the side of our worship center and connected them together, essentially connect, connect, and then it was fused together as one big system. Tracing the signal back mm-hmm. to the ArtNet, what's driving the ArtNet, yeah. is it just going to the computer running Resolume? Yeah, so four cables from the four ArtNet nodes or CPUs, whatever you want to call them, run to a network switch that then has a Cat6 cable that runs from backstage in a rack to front of house, which is running Resolume and ProPresenter, as well as web control to access the ArtNet nodes. All right, what type of computer are we running back here? Uh, it's Mac Studio. Uh, it's pretty aggressively specced, as this will hopefully someday be running like a full LED wall um, and some other stuff hopefully in the future. So goal for this was in like a in the middle step for someday getting a full-blown led wall in our space and then reutilizing this elsewhere so the computer was bought in mind for that happening eventually cat 6 comes out straight into the computer and then it then interfaces with resolume which i can go to here so in resolume there are ndi feeds coming from pro presenter and then you go output advanced and this is the mapping 
or how Resolume does all the DMX addressing and so on for the wall. So you can see those vertical thirds or horizontal thirds rather that I made the wall in. And then it's kind of also made in uh, vertical quarters because I didn't want the cables hanging down to run across horizontally and then down. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's four controllers on stage. So this is controller one, house left, has these guys, as well as this wing over here. Cool. So yeah, show them a little bit more, like you can alter some of the colors of yeah. them, just, and I'll, I'll have a camera on the screen here. Sure, so we were talking about how we built it in horizontal thirds, so that's the first third. There's the second third. There's the last third. So then we connected those together, and then later on, we added these wings uh, to the setup, as well as some Christmas trees that we wrap in the same uh, LEDs. Sweet. So usually you're using Resolume mostly for the mapping of yep. everything, and then not as much like the, using ProPresenter for the actual like content. Yeah, at, yeah. So there's like there's several ways you could do this. What I found works best for our volunteers is to have just NDI feeds coming out of ProPresenter. So sometimes I want something different on the wings versus the walls. So I have two NDI feeds coming out right here and those go into Resolume and are mapped uh, and it does all the math for that. Yep. So yeah, show us some different graphics and examples here. Sure. So what we found works best is a lot of abstract stuff, uh, stuff with soft edges and we end up a lot of times blurring them a little bit, putting a soft edge and that seems to really make things pop. Uh, this is definitely not a replacement for an LED wall. You can put maybe one or two words up there. Beyond that, you start to lose definition because it is like this has less pixels than an Apple Watch. It's not, it's not an LED wall. It's a backdrop that you can change. And a lot of times we find ourselves dialing it back quite a bit because this thing is really powerful at full blast. It can, it would make some people angry. <laughs> Yeah, so then you said the wings, you're like mirroring the image? Yeah, so to kind of give the illusion of a widescreen, what I've done, so this is a good one to show it. In Resolume, you can flip the orientation of it. So we'll do the one on the house right first. So the house right one got built upside down because of how I wanted the cables to lay. So it is flipped vertically and horizontally. So if I was to put it this way, see how oh, it's not yeah. mirroring like that doesn't yep. look great yep so what i've done it kind of gives the illusion of it mm -hmm. having that extra wideness to it without having to get special graphics or rearrange how we do everything now sometimes that doesn't always work so what i can do is in the macros of pro presenter flip the wings to a, the prop layer so like this isn't going to match but i can show you in concept like i could send different content yeah. They're just in ProPresenter and then program it to where the volunteer just hits a button and it does all that for you. No. How have you felt about the way the wall looks on your cameras for your live stream? I'll supply yeah. some footage of it right now. No like RF hits or uh, interference, no scaling or weirdness going on with you get with like a cheaper LED wall. Our sh camera shots here mostly are fairly tight, not all of them. So you kind of lose the scale of the of the pixel wall uh, in a lot of our shots. That being said, I don't think it distracts a ton from it or uh, affects our live stream in any way negatively. Our, our wide shot over there will catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it does look quite good on camera. I imagine that the bokeh effect on some of these lenses, if they're yeah. tight, it probably looks nice and blurred yeah. out in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, it might not be quite as drastic just because it's so low resolution mm -hmm. versus like an actual LED wall, the pixels are close, um, but it does soften it up. So you can see these are all essentially my DMX fixtures and then this is my spreadsheet to keep myself all organized and then you can hit the artnet nodes just over the network so this is just all the patching for lining up resolume and uh 
the Artnet nodes. It'd be interesting to see the, the different options that they have for like different pixel pitches and stuff. Because you mentioned yeah. Willow has a bigger one. So it's yeah. like, if you wanted a simpler one, that like a simple pixel wall that maybe could be quicker to install, are, those, are there options yeah. like that? Yeah, so Willow did theirs I believe they built their own frame essentially, okay. just with wood and spacing it correctly. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is actually the widest that they have with their pixel node net. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they have a three inch and then I believe they have a 1.9 and a one inch as well. Wow. So you can get even closer. Uh, They'll just take forever to set up. Exactly, so Man. I think the three inch is great. Just you get the effect, you know, three, four, or five times, you know. But imagine if you had, LEDs. imagine instead of doing even a full wall, what if you just had like kind of strips of like, yeah. you had oh, like four absolutely. by eight, like pillars yeah. almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. That could look pretty cool and creative. Yeah, absolutely. It's again, it's just Lego bricks. Like I've built just one big wall, mm -hmm. but you can make it whatever you want. It's completely modular. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, if you guys are seeing any weird artifacting right now, it's probably just because of my some of my camera settings. And yeah, here I'll put. You get the nice like moire effect. So we got your lighting uh, control board right here, yep. and then that's a cool vertical screen. You yep. just threw ProPresenter up there. Yeah. So what I have is a theme in ProPresenter that just puts text to transparent. So I build out a slide per service element. So this is what's happening this week. And what I've done is rebuilt the groups in ProPresenter and assigned each slide to a group and then just built a stream deck that has arrows to go up and down essentially in the queue stack like they are on lighting, but also shortcuts to where they can jump around. That's cool. As they need to. So lights and pixel wall is controlled by the same person. They just advance the queue, hit this over here, everything changes. Thank you so much, Phil, for walking us through this setup. And guys, I'll put some links down below if you wanna learn more about the products involved in this system. We have zero affiliation with the company that provided these products. I'm pretty impressed with them and to hear that uh, these pixels have been holding up without burning out um, for over a year now since they installed it. I do think that's pretty impressive. I do want to give you the caveat, like, like Phil already mentioned earlier in the video, that if you wanna build a wall this huge, make sure you budget the appropriate time to do so. Don't think you're gonna be able to put this up in, in like one week. Uh, and I think there are some other cool stage design, creative ways you can approach this with how you wanna lay out different uh, grids of pixels and they can be at different pixel pitches. So I really think it, it's, it can be completely custom and completely tailored to whatever solution you want at your church. So I hope you found this video helpful. Hope you found this to be an inspiring stage design for your church. I think it is a really cool setup. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.